Good morning, grace and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill and I'm at Mount Horeb Lutheran Church. I'm here with you to share today's uh, daily uh, devotion that we're trying to lift up as we gather around God's Word each day. It's uh, Saturday, April 25th, and I hope you're having a, a good day today. Uh, I was reminded, it's funny how over this time of the COVID uh, being inside your house and having a different routine now, uh, how um, our minds, or at least my mind over the last couple of days and even weeks has changed. Uh, you know, in addition to kind of the extra busyness that's going on around trying to organize and coordinate meetings through Zoom or getting together, trying to teach a class or a Bible study or going to a conference, um, I'm also reminded about how, or even doing messages for Sunday, um, I'm also reminded about how some of the downtime, my mind is thinking differently. And I had a very vivid uh, thought this week about a time when I was in the ninth grade in Somerville High School, and I was in one of my classes that Mrs. Turner taught. Mrs. Turner was a math teacher. She was teaching us trigonometry. And on in her classroom, which was pretty bleak looking, the classroom had chalkboards in it, but over the front chalkboard had a poster that read, today is the first day of the rest of your life. And that, for some reason, became a, a vivid thought for me the other day, and it chimed in with the lesson that I would like for us to look at today. I want to look at Mark's gospel, and basically just the first part of it, Mark chapter 1, uh, and the first 15 verses are like an introduction to what the good news that Mark is trying to share with his readers. But the first line simply reads this. In the, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, many scholars, they say, believe that the first verse of Mark's gospel was really just intended to be its title. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. As if to say, when you go and read this story that talks about Jesus and his baptism and the ministry that he began, the healing accounts, the call of the disciples, uh, all of the events when he came back to Jerusalem at the anointing at Bethany, um, the Last Supper, the arrest, the crucifixion, the resurrection, all of these things are just part of the beginning scene of God's coming into the world to change it and give us a new normal a new way of living this life that we have been given. So the story did not end with Jesus' death or even his resurrection, but it started there. And this means that you and I are now in the middle of this story, the unfolding drama of Jesus' ministry in the world that, that he has given to you and me, and he accompanies us in doing it by allowing the Spirit of God to live in us through our baptisms. So that each day we are promised that God accompanies us in all that we do. And we're called to be loving servants in the world. And so Jesus is still here. Jesus is still healing through you and me as, as instruments of his love and care. And so as we care for the poor and for the hungry, um, as we care for each other, we anoint and we show love, the love of Jesus. You know, when we neglect our neighbors, we miss out on opportunities to live out and to share the gospel. And when by the power of the Holy Spirit, we believe and proclaim that life is stronger than death or than a coronavirus, we celebrate the happily ever after of the resurrection, the new life we have in Christ. So one way to say it is welcome to the story, the story that you and I are in together as God's people. Uh, one of the things that I love to do with our confirmation students about this time of year is show a couple of scenes from a, an old movie, 1977, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And it's a multi-hour movie, but there are a lot of poignant scenes that really portray the life of Jesus. You know, throughout the movie, Jesus confronts and has to deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who were kind of the, the chief priests of the temple that oversaw the things that happened. And so there is a scene toward the end after the resurrection, you know, the disciples and the Mary and them have gone to the tomb to see what happened. And finally, word begins to trickle up to the leaders that this has taken place. And so one of the Sadducees in the story um, comes to the tomb. And this is a scene I like to show. Actually goes down into the tomb and looks around at the bleakness of it. Sees the grave clothes on the on the tomb itself, on the, the slab. And... Uh, begins to look around, and in his eyes, he's almost like he's recalling all the things that Jesus said and had done that were being, he was thinking about. 
And so finally, um, one of the people comes up to him and says, see, I told you he's gone. We don't have to worry about him anymore. And he looks off into space and kind of says out loud as if he's thinking out loud. He kind of whispers, now it begins. It all begins. And so the ending of the movie is actually the beginning of the good news. And that's where you and I are today. And that's what this passage from Mark reminds us of, that you and I are partners in this new story that we are a part of as we live out our lives in Christ. So thank you for being a part of that and for knowing that uh, God continues to promise to be with us wherever we are. And so we look for God in the places where we experience those fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, generosity. And those are where we see the light of Christ shining in the world as we continue this story. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Let us pray together. Our gracious and loving God, we're grateful that you are the great storyteller. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and we are here in the middle, in the midst of your presence, not only in our lives, but in this world. So as we fight whatever we face before us, help us to know that you accompany us, that you give us your wisdom and your strength and the faith to follow you throughout whatever we need to do and know that you bless us in a variety of abundant ways. So thank you for inviting us into your story of grace and help us to live it out each day in our own lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, good to be with you this day during this time and blessings on your day every day.